first of all, I'm hearing a lot of companies say, look, it's unclear whether there's a work around this and we can pay in rubles doing a certain thing. And they're asking for clarity from the commission. And the commission says, well, we've been clear. You just can't pay in rubles. Yes, Francine, and you can see why this is very confusing for everyone. The reality is the only thing that's certain now is that Russia is now engaging in uh, gas as geopolitical weapon, and this is escalatory in uh, this conflict with Ukraine. But when you look at the reality on the ground and the paperwork, the lawyers here are going to have to work over time. When you look at the commission, they say yesterday, yes, it would be in breach of sanctions. Anything that facilitates uh, rubles would be a problem. But for companies, they say, well, it we pay Gazprom Bank, which is not sanctioned and has not been cut off from the SWIFT, then where's the problem? So at this stage, there's a lot of confusion here. I don't think it's easy for companies uh, to navigate this. And in fact, there's pressure, not just from companies, but also from officials. Yesterday, European ambassadors actually had a meeting here in Brussels, and they urged the commission to issue new guidance. And Francine, the idea is that in about three hours' time, there is an expected press conference from Ursula von der Leyen, and she is. Uh, belief to uh, come up with some explanation to this. But again, Francine, it's very unclear. I don't think anyone has an answer at this point. Maria, do we know, do we have any clarity if this is taking Europe closer to a full energy embargo on Russia? Well, what we know is that this uh, situation, of course, is creating tension between countries that say we would pay in rubles. I mean, Hungary has come out on the record many times saying that for them it would not be a problem. We know that four potential buyers also looked at those type of accounts. Of course, you pay in euros, Gazprom would do the conversion. But in reality, of course, you're helping uh, Russia to not just prop up their currency and their reserves, but also sidestep some of the central bank uh, sanctions. So this is creating, at this point, tension between the EU-20 so, of course, it's testing uh, that unity. The criticism is that Russia right now is doing divide and conquer between uh, the different member states. And it does bring a, a very fair point here. Is the EU going to front run potential moves from Russia by going, I'd rather embargo first before you cut it off? Keep it in mind, there's a deadline coming up in mid-May. Or do they wait for the Russians to make a move and then respond? But I think the key issue for me here is that Russia has been very successful over the past 48 hours to really test has the limits of this partnership between the 27 members of the European Union, which until now had been very united and had put on a very united, effective uh, front.